So I want you to think about the question that Hillary asked the kids. So what is it that when someone does it to you, you get angry? I mean, more than just eh, kind of a little upset. I mean, really angry I mean, to the point where you want to do something about it. So you got that person, you got that thing, hold that thought, and uh, watch this little clip. Sure, I get upset sometimes. Driving traffic makes me angry. Waiting in line of noise. When my kids don't listen, that frustrates me. And my husband's stupid habits completely irritate me. Driving traffic, waiting in line. This is the world we live in, right? I read this article uh, oh, a couple months ago about America's anger is out of control. And the, and the author of this, uh, this article was talking about how out of control anger is on the rise in America. And all of the different reasons for that and, and all of the different ways this out of control anger shows itself. But you don't need an article to tell you that, do you? I mean, just <laughs> listen to the news, and you'll, you know, won't be long until you read a story about some stupid road rage incident, right, that's happening. Or these, hey, how many stories in the last month have you heard about this? Air rage. Something happens on, in fact, this just happened this last week. There was a fist fight on an airplane. I mean, and the, the, uh, the, the American was arrested when it landed. Uh, so you have road rage, you have air rage. Hey, in the past year, when people on two different sides of political issues have gotten together, what's happened? I mean, this happened just down in Salem, where there's, there's been clash after clash, violent clashes between protesters on both sides of the political spectrum. And again, it's, it just makes the point that, you know, there's, we're living in a world, living in a culture where out of control anger is on the rise. Now, anger is an emotion that God built into each one of us. And so it's going to be there. The question or the, the big question is not, how can you stop from feeling angry? because you're going to feel angry at times. The question is about the choice. What will you choose to do when you feel angry, when that person that you thought about and that situation that you thought about a few minutes ago makes you feel angry and it kind of grows and grows like that balloon starts to expand. What do you do with those feelings of anger? You've got a choice. And the, you know, and the two basic choices is, you can choose to do something negative, or you can choose to do something positive with that anger. Today we're going to con continue our study in the book of James. And if you want to turn to the book of James, get out your study sheet. I've got the notes here, some spaces to, to, to uh, let you know the scriptures that we're going to look at. So if you brought your Bibles, turn to James, or open your device to James, get out that sheet where James, in James 1, talks about the issue of anger. Hey, it's always been a human issue. What we do with our feelings of anger. And this is what he says in the middle of these verses in James chapter 1, verse 20. He says this, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires implied in us. Human anger is the out of control anger that leads to all kinds of negative things. That anger, again, just takes us down a path that's not good. Now, James in this passage does not give any examples of that, 
but there are plenty of examples, human out of control anger that kind of leads to what God doesn't want all throughout the Bible. And here's three negative ways that we can choose to react or deal with anger. And there's probably a little bit of some one of these three or a little of all three in most of us here. So just think about your own reaction when you start feeling anger rise up in you. Some people uh, deal with anger and they tend to be spewers. Now, that's a person that has an instantaneous explosion when they feel angry. They let you know immediately that they're not happy and that immediate explosion is either in a verbal reaction or a physical reaction. So the biblical example of this is in Genesis 4, the story of Cain and Abel. These two brothers, they both offer sacrifices to God. Cain's sacrifice is accepted. Abel, I mean, Abel's sacrifice is accepted. Cain's isn't. And, and there are, are implied reasons for that, that Cain's heart was in the wrong spot. And God kind of tells him, well, you, you didn't get it right. And Cain's reaction is he became incredibly angry. Angry at God, angry at his brother. And in verse 8, he rose up against his brother and he killed them. Cain was a spewer. He spewed out his anger and it harmed his brother. It killed him. Now, there are all kinds of examples today of this spewing reaction to anger. And again, we've already pointed out one. One is road rage. I mean, how many incidents, how many stories, you know, do you watch on the evening news where somebody does something and, and the other person punches them or, I mean, or stops their car and there's an altercation? I mean, it's, it's just almost part of, you know, de you know dealing with driving in, in, in our world today, unfortunately. But that's one negative reaction, is to be a spewer. The second is to be a stewer, okay? Now, a spewer explodes, a stewer implodes, which means when they feel angry, they just stuff those reactions down. They just keep, you know, the, the, the spewer expresses, the stewer represses that anger and pushes it down and down and down, doesn't let anybody see, pretends that nothing's wrong. <coughs> and the problem with that is stewers tend to turn out to be very unhappy, mean-spirited kind of people. An example of that is uh, in Luke 15, the parable of the, the, the lost son where the younger son goes off, takes the father's inheritance, spends it all in wild living, realizes he's messed up, he comes home, the father's happy, throws a celebration, it's all going on. The older brother, meanwhile, he's been working, he's been doing all the stuff that's right. He hears that the younger son has come back, the father's thrown this big party for him, and, it's, and the older brother's reaction, he became very angry and refused to go in. He's not going to deal with it. He's just going to repress it. He's just going to stuff it down. And there's no conclusion to this story. He just lives imprisoned by this repressed anger. So decades and decades and decades ago, on my first church in Lake Oswego, when I got there, everybody said, oh, Stay away from so-and-so. <laughs> you don't want to cross paths with them. And I, and I figured out why, because this person was just critical of everything and everybody. It was like there was this cloud of unhappiness around them. Nothing would ever be positive. They would find, this person would find ways to bad mouth, talk down, and, and just point out the, you know, everything bad that they could, not only in the church, but in the world. I mean, it was just, this person was not pleasant to be around. So I made it my little mission in life to get to know what's going on with this person. I'm not going to let 
their kind of meanness, mean spirit, keep me away. Because it basically has worked with everybody else. No, nobody ever wanted to talk with this person. Nobody ever wanted to deal with this person. They would walk into you know, this, the, uh, a room at the church and everybody just kind of moved away 10 feet. It's like there was some evil radiation coming out of their life. <laughs> but I asked the Lord, there's something going on in this guy's life. And year after year after year, I hung in there. I kept talking with this person. And I kept getting criticized and insulted and, and put down. I mean, but it was not, I knew it wasn't personal. I just put up this, like, I'm going to, I'm going to endure, Lord. I'm going to endure it. I'm going to put up because I know there's something going on. Years and years and years later, finally the moment comes when we actually have a conversation. And he let me know what it was that way before I met him he had a deep deep hurt in his life his daughter got sick he prayed to God he got down on his knees and begged to God for her life and she died and from that moment on he became angry at God and angry at church and angry you know at everybody he he came to know it's, a, I mean, it's kind of a miracle he kept going to church, but those are the only folks that would kind of uh, put up with him. So after sharing that with me and after me just kind of, you know, talking about how sorry and hurt I was that that happened, he slowly began to change and soften his heart and soften how he dealt with people. And But he was a steward. And, and there's, it's, it's so unfortunate that sometimes people that repress that anger go on for years and years and years and, and deal critically with people who have no idea why they, they're getting this negative reaction from something that happens decades before. But that's one reaction people can have, and it's not good. It's not good for them. It's not good for the, in their, all of their relationships. So people can choose to be spewers and explode or stewers and kind of implode and the third is a kind of a combination of both and I made this up you know we're not going to find this word in the dictionary but I had to rhyme it with something okay so just put up it's kind of a word but it's really not meant to be like what we're using it today okay so you have a spewer a stewer and a skewer okay you know when you skewer something you know how you kind of poke something through it okay you skewer something. Skewers tend to reload, which means that when they get angry, they're not going to react initially. They're not going to explode, but they hold on to that, and they're going to plot a way to get even. They're going to find a way, even if it takes years, to pay the other person back and go, how does that feel? I'm telling you, and this probably is the most dangerous. Because this person will go through any length to seek revenge. And when you think about it, this biblical example is in Luke 6. Jesus begins his ministry. He doesn't follow the normal Jewish protocols. He's a little bit critical of the Pharisees. And it says, and at this, the enemies of Jesus, the religious leaders, were wild with rage. And they began to discuss what to do with him. They plotted and plotted and planned to skewer Jesus ultimately to the cross. And it's a, it's a dangerous reaction to anger. In today's world, I, there are so many sad examples of this. Um, in fact, it was 10 years ago this week that a young man who was very disturbed went to freshman in college, had some emotional problems, and felt bullied, felt ignored, felt made fun of, felt he was ridiculed. And he started writing about all of his anger and what he would do and how he would get even. And the anger built up and, the, and his planning built up 
and he purchased some guns. And uh, this young man, uh, Young, uh, Young Yi Cho, did this. And I remember being in that classroom where the slaughter took place. I took a class there. Um, senseless, painful, horrific. But unfortunately, it's just one of the ways, one of the horrible ways that a person can deal with their anger. And God doesn't want any of this to take place. Which is why James has said, this kind of anger doesn't produce God's righteousness or what God wants to result in our lives. And then besides being kind of you know, negative about it, James goes on and says, so let me tell you what you can do to deal with your feelings of anger in a positive way to manage. Three things, and they're on your sheet. First is this. He says, be slow to anger. That's just, that's, that's, un keep, let that be your first reaction when you feel angry. Don't have an immediate reaction. James 119, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Those, and I said this in a class, it's like a little equation. A plus B equals C. A, being quick to listen, B, slow to speak, equals C, the ability to be slow to anger. We goof that up, and we say we're, 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 uh, we're, we're slow to listen and quick to speak, and that's why we have a problem with anger. Now here's the thing, you're going to feel angry, I get that. You can certainly express in a respectful way to somebody else that you feel hurt and that's a good thing to do. But what James is saying here, don't spew, don't let the other person have it. That's our natural instinct, I mean to tell them off, to give them a piece of your mind. James is saying it's okay to let somebody know that you're hurt. but then listen, stop and listen. Stop speaking and listen to them. Let God, give God a moment to work in their hearts and to work in your hearts. I think what, uh, what James is saying here is what my grandmother and probably every one of our grandmothers have told us when you get angry, count to 10 because God's got a chance to work in your life to temper a negative reaction when you feel angry. So that's the first thing. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and that helps us to be slow in, in our expression of anger. Here's the, third, here's the uh, next thing. Rid yourself of all evil. So he says in verse 21, get rid of all the filth and evil that's in your life. Now, the issue here is this, that sometimes we get far too comfortable with thought patterns and behaviors that God would consider wrong, that God would consider dangerous, that God would say, listen, it is not good to even, you know, I mean, have those floating around in your heart because when you get angry, it multiplies and magnifies your reaction to anger so the best thing to do, James is saying, is the wisest thing in dealing with your anger is do an assessment of, of your moral, the moral condition of your heart and life. Do some, be willing to do some like cleanup in your heart. Identify what God would consider something that is wrong, a thought pattern or behavior, and identify it and then get rid of it. The Greek for, for get rid of this, means get rid of it. <laughs> it means, yeah, like remove it. And that's not easy, but God says that anger plus other negative moral things in your life just make the, you know, it much easier to have a wrong reaction when you start to feel angry. So let me tell you a little story about how we should not feel comfortable with things 
potentially dangerous things kind of in our, in our life. Um, when I was in high school, uh, I didn't have much of a social life. Uh, so uh, I, it, you know, I just hung out with my friends. And I think it was about my junior year, I wanted to, you know, to spend a night kind of as a sleepover with the guy down the street, Bobby. And uh, his parents and my parents, we kind of worked on this. And his parents were going to be gone, but every, his parents and my parents knew that that was the deal. But his older brother was going to be around to supervise. Can you tell how this is going to go bad? <laughs> but, and everybody agreed to that. And we weren't, you know, we were just going to play, you know, like, ping pong and pool and just hang out. And so his brother, we start, start the evening off having a good time. His brother, who was the first hippie I ever really knew uh, and had the Volkswagen with the paint on it, psychedelic curls and everything, you got to remember back in the day, uh, said to us around 10 o'clock, he said, hey, I'm going out. I'll be back around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So. You guys go to bed, you'll be fine. There's plenty of food, you know, to eat. He goes, and by the way, by the way, my pet boa constrictor got out of his cage. I can't find him. So I'll look for him when I get back. He's not that dangerous. Walks out the door. And I had seen this snake before. He was, he was about, he, she, I don't know how to tell a girl or a boy snake. <clears throat> anyway, about six feet long, you know, and about like that, you know, in the middle. And no, I'm, I'm not going to bed. <laughs> uh-uh, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not sleeping with that crawling around. So Bobby and I go on a search of the house and we don't stop until we find it, which took us several hours looking in every room, every nook, every cranny, and found it under a bed. Not, not like under a bed, because we looked under all the beds. It had crawled up into the uh, box springs. Yeah, it was curled around up in there. It's like, no, there's no way. You know, we're, we're going, no, not going to do it. I'm not going to feel comfortable until that snake is in his place. And so we bribed them out. So I forgot what. Uh, but it took hours. And the point of it is, would anybody here besides Jim <laughs> feel comfortable going to bed with that snake crawling around? Who knows where? Nobody. It'd be, no, it, it's like, well, you wouldn't because of the p potential danger. So who, which of us would feel comfortable with some evil behavior or thought crawling around in the corners of our hearts or lives and not think anything of it. Wouldn't you do everything to get rid of that snake to find it? Yes. Wouldn't you do everything to get rid of whatever dangerous behavior or thought pattern there is in your life so that it is not a threat to you? Of course. That's what James is saying. Do that and you'll manage your anger. So be quick to listen, slow to speak, rid yourself of those things that in your life that are potentially dangerous or negative influence. Third, fill yourself with God's word. He ends by saying this in, in uh, verse 21. And then humbly accept God's word, which God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your lives. And when he says humbly accept, that means do more than just open the Bible and read a few verses here or there. To humbly accept God's word means not only you read it, but then you know it and you believe it, and you follow it. You, you follow it as the truth for your life. And humbly accepting God's word means that, that because God's word speaks of Jesus Christ, we humbly then accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior as well. And in that, then we gain a strength, a power that will give us the ability to manage anger. And the power to save your souls is not only future oriented, when we accept Jesus Christ, accepting God's word, not only will we be, we'll be free from death, we're talking about heaven,
but we're also free in the present, and God will give us the strength to have power over our out-of-control tendencies when it comes to dealing with anger. Paul says the exact same thing in different words in James 4. He says, hey, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. Does that sound familiar? Okay. As well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving, just as, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Fill yourself with those. Follow God's example. Get rid of what is, what is not good and fill yourself with God's great gifts in Jesus Christ. Instead of reacting with anger, react with mercy and, and, and compassion and forgiveness. And why that makes a difference is in our culture, in this world, everyone expects when they do something wrong to hurt you, for you to strike back in anger. But when you show mercy and kindness, God has a chance to speak to their hearts. The Bible tells us that God is incredibly hurt when we sin. And instead of showing his anger towards us and sending down lightning bolts from heaven, God showed his mercy for us and he sent down his son to change our hearts, to fill our hearts so that we could forgive others as he has forgiven us. So let me just close with this little story. This happened several years ago. I was parked at what used to be known as Lambs, pulled in, and uh, it wasn't too long, just a few seconds, that I heard the sound coming from my right. And the person beside me had opened their car door into my passenger car door. You know that sound? That horrible metal on metal sound? And what I'm going to share with you happened in an instant. I thought, you stupid idiot. Don't you have respect for anybody? Come on, look, you know, just, and then I just like, all right, I'm getting out of this car, I'm coming over there, and if there's a dent, I'm gonna make you pay. I'm gonna, and I'll call the police, and we're gonna get this settled, this is not gonna happen, and, and then I thought, well, wait a second, what happens if it leads to a confrontation, and we get into a brawl? Oh my goodness, that can't happen because then in the Wilsonville spokesman there'd be this headline. <laughs> that all happened in a blip, 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 blip. Lord, 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 Lord. Slow to anger, slow to anger, slow to anger. I've already got a dinner or two, another one's not gonna matter. Okay, be calm. And then the guy got out of the car and he kept getting out of the car. And he kept getting out of the car. <laughs> and he was like 6'8", 300 pounds. And I realized, oh my goodness, if I would have gone out and got there and gotten in his face, this would have been the headline. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, is it worth it? No, it's never worth it. So, as we end, let's read this verse to each other. Okay. And it's great wisdom that we should apply to our lives. This verse from uh, James 1. So let's read it. You're reading it to someone around you, but you're also listening to someone around you. Ready? Here we go. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry, in Jesus' name, amen.